Today we're talking about the Third Amendment of the Constitution, an amendment so straightforward, boring, and somewhat irrelevant now that the American Bar Association called it the runt piglet of the U.S. Constitution. It's never been the basis for a major Supreme Court decision, and it's so obscure that when you search Third Amendment on Google, you get almost 8 million results, which might sound like a lot until you compare that 8 million to around 25 million for the First Amendment, just over 21 million for the Second Amendment, just under 47 million for Brad Pitt, and uh, the new Ant-Man movie gets almost 72 million results. Once you break down the amendment and look at its relevance, it's not hard to see why. Still, there's enough information to talk about and get into today on the show, and I'm trying to start off the podcast by going through the Bill of Rights. So, here we go. I'm Cole, and this is Political Theory. The text of the amendment has never been up for interpretation, nor will it ever be most likely. It reads, quote, No soldier shall in a time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law, end quote. And that's pretty straightforward. James Madison introduced the amendment as a result of the quartering acts by the British in 1765, which allowed British troops to be stationed in North American households without the consent of the owners. And with that fresh in their minds, the founding fathers were sure to include the amendment. The only real debate in passing the Third Amendment came in whether or not an exception should be made for situations of unrest, and whether or not the executive or the legislature should have the rights to quarter, if they desired. But ultimately it was passed without any exceptions, and given a lack of debate surrounding the Third Amendment, there are only a few uh, times that the courts have ever really gotten involved. The biggest one, and really the sole time a challenge to the law has occurred, was uh, under the Third Amendment, came in 1982, when the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit what happened was, in 1979, corrections officers at the Mid-Orange Correctional Facilities, among a few other facilities, were on strike in New York when the government sent National Guardsmen to fulfill the duties of the corrections officers while they were on strike. Striking employees were then evicted from their employing household, which was given to the operating National Guardsmen. Officers Charles Palmer and uh, Marianne Engblom filed suit against the state of New York for violating the Third Amendment. The Court of Appeals ruled that because the National Guardsmen did qualify as soldiers and that because they were living in the homes where the striking correctional officers had acted as owners, they had violated the Third Amendment. There have been several instances in which people have tried to challenge federal agents or police breaking into their homes to gather intelligence without the owner's knowledge as illegal under the Third Amendment, but those cases have never gotten much attention, nor gotten very far. Recently in the court case, Mitchell v. City of Henderson, a Nevada family claimed that municipal officers breaking into their home while they were away for the sake of uh, the officers were trying to gain a tactical advantage against the Mitchell's neighbors who were believed to be criminals. Well, the Mitchell said that that had violated their Third Amendment right. But Judge Andrew Gordon dismissed the case, saying that municipal officers were soldiers, and despite the extensive time they spent in the house, uh, thought to be as high as nine hours, it still didn't qualify as quartering. Ilya Selman, who's a a professor of law at George Mason University, wrote about the case in the Washington Post, and he argued that, quote, Judge Gordon may well be right that the officers involved in this case are not plausibly considered soldiers under the Third Amendment, but he is too quick to conclude that no municipal police officer could ever qualify as such, end quote. With the increasing militarization of police blurring the lines between soldiers and municipal officers, a Third Amendment challenge could potentially happen under the qualification that police were soldiers, that they had quartered by spending the right amount of time in a house. Judge Andrew Gordon simply didn't find that to be the case in this circumstance. Beyond that, the Third Amendment has only really been used to confirm that the Constitution guarantees a certain amount of privacy, though it's never been the basis for a major court decision. It's only alluded to in cases like Griswold v. Connecticut, a contraception case, and in Youngston Sheet and Tube Company v. Sawyer, a case dealing with seal strikes, uh, in the context of how the Constitution addresses privacy. Beyond that, it's a fairly uneventful amendment. I hope you'll tune in next time when we talk about the Fourth Amendment, which is, uh, in contrast to this one, not only one of the most historically prominent amendments, but one that's especially relevant in light of the Patriot Act, among other things. Uh, If you have any information you want to add, any questions, comments, or concerns, or whatever else, please email uh, them to politicaltheorypodcast at gmail.com, and I'll do my best to answer them out loud on the show. Uh, Until next time, thanks for listening.